The bombing goes on as millions of people flee for safety. Despite the horrors, many stay to fight. Inside Ukraine, hunters and shooters are using their special skills to protect the country. Some have joined the army, others have banded together to protect their homes. Taras Olinik works for Ibis Hunting and Guns in Kyiv. The 47-year-old was hunting deer, boar and foxes. Now he has another target in his sights. Fight is going on um, on the north uh, from Kyiv. Uh, and it's like 10 to 15 kilometers. So all I can hear from the place where, where I now, it's my apartment actually, all I can hear is the uh, sound of distant explosion and sometimes a gunfight. From the start of uh, all this war, uh, I feel like I got just a second job because uh, I now do my day job in, um, uh, in our store, uh, which is uh, now it's operating uh, uh, in very, very uh, unusual, uh, so to say, uh, mode. But uh, at nights uh, I have a guard on uh, rooftops uh, in some positions in Kiev. So we have uh, like day duties and night duties and that's, that's my job for now. Taras says the skills of hunters and shooters have been vital in the resistance against the Russians. Having a gun and knowing what to do with it is uh, absolutely different, um, absolutely different skills. And um, talking about hunters, um, uh, people who uh, know how to shoot and to know how to shoot effectively are uh, much better uh, soldiers and warriors than people who don't know anything. They do uh, quite a lot of teaching because there are a huge amount of people in Ukraine who were joining territorial defense forces but they actually they know nothing about guns about rifles they never shot anything and there is a huge need uh, in uh, uh, teachers and instructors to uh, at least to make them uh, safe with guns Roy Herelia runs Hunt Ukraine he lived in the country for 12 years he returns to take shooters on hunting trips and is in regular contact with the hunting community inside Ukraine. They're helping out, they're doing the, what they can in their areas because they know the areas like the back of their hand, as you can imagine, the local guys. They know the forest, they know all the little tracks, the roots, secret little spots. Uh, they, they're being used to help the army locate you know, at the enemy. Then they pass on information, they work as sort of forward scouts. They actually do more, part, like they say, near partisani, you know, like guerrilla warfare. They take part in that, helping, stopping the, the soldiers. They might create roadblocks, diversions. They, they actually, you know, shoot and destroy vehicles. The main target for uh, civilian hunters in those areas are uh, fuel uh, trucks, supply trucks, and things that um, uh, make uh, Russians able to continue this aggression. So uh, our hunters are quite successful at this. Meanwhile, the drive to help refugees continues. Ukraine Equestrian Relief has taken nine horse boxes loaded with aid to Poland. Stephen Barnes, who works with the High Peak Trail Hunt, is leading the mission which has raised more than £35,000. Hunters and shooters from all over the UK joined the mammoth journey. The biggest challenge has been logistics, um, getting people there, moving stuff around, picking up um, the stock and sorting it and taking it down there, the actual aid. Um, the logistics of moving people around through borders away from the UK and, and also um, managing people and keeping us all on a, a route to a destination. Highlights for me, definitely the refugee reception point when you have a language barrier and people just come forward and give you a hug because that's amazing. My uh, family are now in France. I know a lot of a lot of uh, women and children now in, in Europe and probably in UK. So thanks a lot for everyone who uh, have them uh, greeted and have them uh, in safe place. Uh, and that's a really huge help for us because uh, we should we should be able to fight without worries for, for our families. Hunters and shooters from Oxfordshire 
also took aid to Poland for refugees. E.J. Churchill paid for the fuel. Shooter Richard Binning, who's a farmer and land agent from Oxford, was one of the drivers. A really warm glow uh, delivering donated goods that these people needed. Um, it also made us realise what a local effort it is. I mean, our contact was with the local town council. Uh, he had literally got his brother and the local football team to help us unload the, the vans. The best bit was the support that the Polish people felt from us being there. The road to help refugees is fraught with challenges. Christopher Scheib, who has an angling lodge in Norway, is leading convoys from Germany, collecting people from the borders with Ukraine. He's facing problems bringing them back from Poland. Earlier today we were somewhat frustrated in Krakow. We were at the train station and uh, it was full of refugees, completely filled to the rim. And um, we couldn't get any because we weren't registered. It's just that you can't register. Um, for maybe for the next three days. I was talking to another refugee group from Hamburg who had brought an excess of 2,000 people out of uh, Poland into Germany. And um, they've been arrested by the police and threatened. I mean, I, we do understand that the police is trying to secure or to, to work on the security for the refugees, but um, they're all believing the story of people being here to you know trade in organs and, and put people into prostitution which is kind of weird when you're there with a uh, double-decker bus with 60 people in it. Most of the refugees are women and children. Once they have visas they'll need somewhere to live. Around 50 Scottish estates have offered refugees houses and jobs. The Phil Sports community is helping at home and on the front line. If you want to support them please see the description below for the links to the appeals.